Have you been out looking for hard surface flooring options for your remodel and have become growingly confused with all of the waterproof flooring options that are currently being touted by many of your major manufacturers? If so, consider this video your crash course to really sort through all the chaos and confusion that is the waterproof flooring category. My name is Robert and I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs and waterproof flooring is in fact one of the hottest trends and it's a great product category, but it's not a simple straightforward product category. There's a lot of subsets to this and there's a lot of limitations in terms of just how waterproof some of these products are and how it's actually going to affect the way that you live on it in your home. So in this video, I'm not looking to endorse any specific product or brand. Yes, I do in fact have my preferences and I'm happy to share those with you from my perspective, but I'm really looking to give you the information so that you can make the right decision based on how your environment is, what your household circumstances are, and so that we can set up realistic expectations that you can have going into it and not be disappointed. Because I so often find when I have clients that have come in and they're really disappointed with their last product, it's because because they weren't properly educated and they, they were given the wrong product for the wrong environment uh, or they just not all of their concerns were really addressed appropriately and so they were kind of you know set up for disappointment right out of the gate um, hopefully we can try and eliminate that for you by just giving you guys the right information so that you can really understand what the benefits of this product category are as well as what some of the limitations are so to get started I want to give you just a real quick breakdown of what the different subsets of the waterproof flooring category are and kind of how they came to be because there are now uh, ever-growing number of products underneath this umbrella that is waterproof flooring and there's a lot of different versions of it and levels of waterproofness to these. Waterproof flooring first kind of stemmed as a hybridization of two different product categories one of which was our traditional laminates which were floating floors made of a fiber core board with a more or less a picture on top typically to look like wood. And then separately, we had some changes going on in our vinyl industry where we were transitioning from a lot of just the sheet vinyls more and more towards new vinyl tile products. Uh, products that were actually formatted in a plank to look like wood gave us a lot of the benefits of vinyl. But instead of being limited to sheets, we were given individual planks, which were great for doing repairs where instead of having to replace an entire sheet of product because of a tear in the middle, we were able to now just address replacing that one individual piece that was damaged. So we had these two different categories that ultimately culminated into our very first waterproof floor, which was was a floating installation option with a vinyl surface on the top. Now the biggest difference between this new floating floor and our traditional laminates was the core structure. We now had a product that was touting what we call WPC or wood plastic composite core. This core instead of our traditional fiber was now a material that had already been getting used in some of our exterior building but had never been adopted into flooring before. So we merged the vinyl plank surface to this new core structure and then created a locking system for it and now we had a floating waterproof core structure with a vinyl surface on the top. That product was originally created by US Floors in the Cortec line and was really the first foray into a product being marketed as a waterproof floor. It wasn't very long before we started to see other brands adopt this core and continue to grow the offerings that are waterproof flooring. Some of them were just strictly that core with the vinyl surface on top. Uh, US Floors also being a major player in cork flooring actually attached a cork underlayment to the back of the product. So now you additionally had a cork underlayment which is also waterproof. We use it to stop wine from coming out of a bottle, right? Naturally, it's, it holds um, you know, liquids, but it also was designed to help quiet and cushion the floor a little bit for us. So that product was kind of the first one, but again, as we've seen it develop and evolve, we now were then introduced with a new core structure that replaced that wood plastic composite with what we now know as SPC. So when you're out there looking at the different products, you're gonna see both of these things come up. SPC was uh, basically, there's a couple different names that you might hear people um, 
refer to it as, and it is somewhat up for debate depending on who you talk to, but it's typically either referred to as a stone plastic composite core or a stone polymer core. Uh, I've heard it as solid polymer core, so depending on who you talk to, not everybody's in total agreement as to what SPC actually stands for. But it's basically a harder version. Instead of that wood plastic composite, it's now stone. Um, so you actually have stone in that core structure and it makes it much more rigid, much more impact resistant, and more solid on the floor. What are the benefits of that? Again, it's more solid. What are the drawbacks of that? it's more solid. It's a harder floor. So it's not going to be as comfortable as the WPC core. It's also with being that it has the stone in it. Uh, it's a little bit more prone to feel cold in the winter months. So, you know, if you're in a, an environment where it gets really cold, that floor will, will feel colder underfoot than the wood plastic composite core. Uh, but when it comes to vinyl surface products now that are currently being offered, those are going to be our two major categories of floating waterproof floors. We're going to have some that still use the WPC and we're going to have others that use the SPC. From there, there's also going to be differences based on what type of uh, pad they may attach underneath. Uh, there's also going to be differences in the actual finish, the amount of aluminum oxide that they put on, or some use a ceramic bead finish. Um, those will play a factor in how well it actually wears on the surface. Um, and those are things that you can get really bogged down with all of the critical elements of the you know product. Um, some of it, it's a lot to take in. So I would largely encourage you to look at what the warranties that are being offered from one product to the next are in terms of, you know, does it carry any type of commercial warranty in addition to a residential warranty? Because even if it's warrantied for light commercial, that lets you know that it's, it's going to be set up to do just about anything that you need it to do in your home as far as holding up against, you know, your, your surface scratches, big dogs, kids, um, you know, the, the normal day to day things that you might throw at it. Um, and that's a little bit of an easier way for you to go about it as opposed to trying to, you know, just scour through all of the technical um, specifications of the product in something that you may or may not really have a great understanding of. It's a lot to take in even for those of us that are in the industry um, and some of it we're, we're getting into you know borderline chemistry class so you know for a real easy way look at what the manufacturer is telling you you can expect and what they're willing to stand behind. That's a really good way for you to, to have a general idea of if that product is going to be well designed for your home. Secondarily to that, I would tell you, you know, make sure that you're buying it from somebody that you trust, somebody that's taking the time to explain it to you and is knowledgeable uh, because, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, that education that ideally you're leaning on an expert for as opposed to you having to figure out for yourself. So between this video helping you and your local rep helping you, um, I would say, you know, don't get too bogged down in the specs. Look at what the manufacturer is warrantying on it and look at what your uh, contractor is, is telling you and advising you on based off of your needs and them truly understanding those needs. All right, so moving on, we've got the vinyl waterproof floors. Well, second to that, we've now got actual laminate floors that are in fact waterproof. Now, what's the difference? These products, the, the laminate products, in terms of how waterproof are they, could we put them at the bottom of a swimming pool the way that US Floors did with their waterproof floor to demonstrate how well it holds up? Well, no. It still has a wood uh, composite core structure, so if it is completely submerged underwater, yes, it's eventually going to fail. Where does the waterproof element of these floors come into play? It comes into play that they now have a hydro seal on the surface of the product. The cores that a lot of these products are being made with are now much more homogenous in nature and the type of wood fiber that they're using. So again, they are denser and much more naturally water resistant, but the seal that they put on the surface allows water to, again, sit on it indefinitely without ever penetrating into that joint and actually affecting that core itself. Now there's other installation requirements that some of these floors have to truly waterproof the surface, which would involve putting a seal around the perimeter with a specific bead that goes across that and it basically prohibits anything from coming in on the sides. But if you did have, you know, a slab crack underneath, that water is going to damage the floor. And I'm going to get into the insurance related issues with waterproof floors here very shortly because I feel that this is something that's very often overlooked. 
but what I want to point out on the laminate side is that these are in fact now waterproof floors against really any of your day-to-day -day issues and the only weaknesses in terms of where would waterproof no longer apply is really going to be much more involved in things like a toilet flooding, a water heater bursting, something that's creating a tremendous amount of water and literally flooding your house to the point that you may also have baseboard and drywall repairs, subfloor repairs, much more going on than just what happened to your actual floors. And then lastly, we do also now have a few products that are a true wood surface using that same waterproof core that we were talking about in our vinyls so that if you did want a true wood surface you can get that with a waterproof option okay so knowing that we have the vinyl waterproof floors which are a hundred percent waterproof whether they're submerged underwater uh, or you know it's on the surface and then we have the laminate floors which are waterproof on the surface but not inherently waterproof top to bottom why would we choose the laminate option over the waterproof vinyl option where we have full waterproof versus a little bit more conditions on the waterproof well there's a couple reasons laminates in general all their factors considered our higher end waterproof laminates are going to be more scratch resistant on the surface than the vinyl floors i find i have a lot more instances um, of customers that have had the vinyl floors and have little surface scratches that they see um, there are ways to to treat some of those but it's not as inherently scratch resistant as what the uh, typical laminates are. One of the other things, I think the laminates, having been around for a lot longer and the printing mechanisms that have been used for laminates, they are still far superior in terms of the final look of the floor, the ability for them to print all the way over the edges of the floor and uh, emboss onto the top surface, creating a very realistic texture and visual are still more sophisticated with laminate than with the vinyl surfaces. And I'll show you a couple examples of that here shortly. Uh, but those would be a couple of the reasons. And then thirdly, laminate as a product category, our highest end laminate offerings price point wise are still gonna probably top out where more of the mid-tier waterproof flooring options are. So there is a cost advantage to the waterproof laminate categories over the vinyls. All right, now I wanna to touch on another factor that's gonna be relevant whether we're talking about waterproof vinyl or waterproof laminate. And that's the reality of what that looks like applied in your house, waterproof flooring. What is that really going to mean for you when it comes to it being in your home? What it really means is the normal day-to-day -day things that you might throw at the floor, you can have a pretty great peace of mind with. But, when you have the type of situation that you would be calling your homeowner's insurance for, whether it's the 100% waterproof vinyls or the waterproof with a caveat laminates, expect that you're going to be replacing your floor. Unless you have a tremendous amount of material that's left over or you're lucky enough that if down the road you ever have an issue, that material is still available and still available with the same locking system, the same surface appearance that it has the day that you buy it. If you don't have those things, regardless of how waterproof your floor was, most likely you're still looking at having to replace your overall floor. So why is it that you're gonna be looking to have to replace a waterproof floor when you have a flood in the home? Well, it's because when you call your insurance up, they're going to send out a emergency restoration contractor to get out there and dry your floor out as quickly as possible. That company is coming in with that goal in mind. They are not coming in trying to assess what type of floor that you have and determine, oh, is this a waterproof floor or not? They're coming in and saying, we got water everywhere. We need to get this out. We need to get the subfloor dry. We need to get fans in here. We need to be cutting out walls. During all, those, all of that process, Typically your floor is collateral damage. It's a casualty in the process of them going in and getting to all of the other water that's around so that they can dry it out. If your waterproof floor is installed on top of a wood subfloor, that wood subfloor is not waterproof and it may need to be replaced. So again, they're pulling out that old floor. Unless that contractor is pulling out the floor with the intent of not damaging any of the edges, any of that locking system. They're marking where every single one of those pieces was so that all the perimeter cuts against the wall are accounted for and are designed to go right back where they were, which they're not gonna be doing. 
then when they finish the repairs, you're typically not gonna end up with that floor ready to just go right back down the way that it was. That would normally only be the case if it was a very, very small uh, issue. Uh, but that's just normally not the reality of it. I've spent you know over a decade now heavily, heavily involved in insurance replacement work. And I find that regardless of what type of floor it was, a lot, a lot of waterproof floors I've gone in and we've ended up having to replace the entire home, not because the floor itself didn't hold up against the water, but because of all those other factors leading to that product still being damaged in some other way. And then it's not available anymore, or it doesn't look the same with the new current batches. And those factors end up still requiring us to go through the insurance and replace the floor. So that's the bad news. The good news is typically your insurance is going to be covering it. So I just, I get really disappointed when we forget to take that into account on the contractor side and oversell what that waterproof really means for people. Um, one of the other factors is if that water is labeled as sewage, again, they're going to replace that floor, not because of the water, but because of the potential bio biohazard materials. So, you know, when we have floods that come up from toilets and things like that, oftentimes that's labeled as a uh, biohazard under the insurance. And so then when it's sewage like that, they, they replace the floor. They're not going to try and sanitize and clean that floor. It's generally going to be replaced. All of these things can vary depending on who your insurance contractor is, what type of policy you have as to what extent they're going to take liability for replacing for you. Are they going to do partial or full replacement? Those are conversations to be had. Hopefully you never need to, but I'm speaking somewhat in generalities and just wanting you to understand that just because it's waterproof doesn't mean if you had a flood in your home, you're not going to be replacing the floor regardless of which product plan that that would be the case. So what we are really looking for is a floor that's waterproof against our day to day stuff. And both of these categories can provide that for us. All right, guys. So here we have a close up of two of the leading products in their respective categories. On the left hand side, the more gray colored product here, we've got a Mohawk Revwood and that's going to be the new version of the laminate. Um, and on the right side, we've got a U.S. Floors Cortec product, um, which is going to be our vinyl surface with the waterproof core. Uh, what I really wanted to show, and the reason that I am still somewhat partial to the waterproof laminates myself, is because I believe them to be a little bit more of a realistic looking floor than what the waterproof vinyls are. Now, there are obviously exceptions. There are some amazing looking uh, vinyl surface products, but there's a couple distinct things that I wanna point out, some of which hold true to both. Uh, I'm using these two as an example because here on the left-hand side, we've got a product where we have our edge detail that actually has the visual running all the way over the edge. So the picture goes all the way into the joint where the two products lock together here. And you can see that you know, both on the side as well as on the ends of these planks. Now on the right hand side here with the vinyl product, we have an example of a beveled edge. And you can see that the visual does not actually go down all the way into that groove. So the edge profile is actually painted a dark color that just goes all the way through the joint. Now, one of the things that you might like about that is it does define the planks a little bit more, but it also makes it that much more apparent that this is not a wood floor of any kind. You know, it, it, it's painted in there. So that's somewhat of a personal preference, but it is something to pay attention and notice. Now, we also have uh, with this product what we call register embossing, which is where the picture and the texture match. That's going to be apparent on both of these products. We have a oak look grain here and everywhere that we see this grain, the texture actually is matched to the picture as opposed to our older products where the texture was just applied across randomly and we might see a knot, but there's no feel to that knot. Uh, that is still present in a lot of products. So your higher end products are gonna use what's called registered embossing, and they're going to basically marry the picture and the texture together. That just creates a much more realistic finished product. 
Another thing I notice a lot of clients will say uh, about vinyl planks is that they have a plasticky looking finish to them. Um, one of the things that surprises me with the uh, Mohawk Revwood, uh, I would also say the same thing with uh, the Mannington laminate offerings from their Restorations collection, as well as the Quick Step line, which is owned by Mohawk and uses the same technology, is how much it looks like wood. Um, you put it side by side with a lot of wood floors, and I've actually done this test with people where I'll put the, the laminate up with a wood that's a very close color, ask them to tell me which one is which, and when I've done this with a couple of groups, it was a pretty even split. It was not anything where they were definitively all saying that one was wood and one was the rev wood or the laminate, uh, but they were actually, they had a hard time distinguishing between them. I don't find that that's the case near as often with the vinyl planks because they do tend to have more of a sheen on them um, and they just have that little bit more of a manufactured look so those are a couple of the, the distinct differences, but you know, really there's good, better, and best in every product category, and these are no exceptions. So when you get out there and you start looking at the, the different options, you're gonna notice um, you know, your higher end products just tend to look better. So things to keep in mind in terms of little details there on the edge profile and the way that they actually texture these products, um, but that's something that you're gonna see is present in both options. So just something to look out for. One other thing that I'll point out here just as a, another positive for you with both of these products as opposed to another popular category being uh, tiles that look like wood is in both cases we do not have grout. So for those of you that hate grout, rest assured waterproof flooring, you can eliminate grout uh, and not have to worry about cleaning that and you've got a tight joint that nothing's gonna penetrate through. Um, one of the other things that I like about floating floors in general over wood look tiles being again another very popular alternative to these these products are softer to walk on if you stand on a tile for an hour let's say you're cooking in the kitchen uh, you will likely feel that you know start to hurt on your feet maybe hurt on your low back a little bit where you'll have a little bit more of a grace period on the floating floors um, you know eventually when you're when you're on your feet and if you have uh, issues with your low back like myself or you know your feet start to hurt when you're standing on them for a long time then yes uh, none of it's going to be as soft as carpet we'll say but for those areas that you need a hard surface I think these do offer a much greater degree of comfort than what a tile floor does they also are typically warmer uh, and you know they hold their temperature a little bit better in those winter months um, and then between the two uh, I would say that the laminate is going to be more so the softer product as well as it being the uh, product that holds its temperature a little bit better. And then when we get to our vinyls, as I mentioned, those products with the wood plastic composite core will be softer and warmer than those with the stone plastic composite core. So one other uh, you know, thing to be considered when you're making your selections. So there's your crash course on waterproof flooring. Hopefully I helped kind of give you a little bit of a foundation for understanding some of the terminology that's being thrown around, having a little bit of a better understanding as to what one waterproof floor is versus another waterproof floor and the fact that they're not all the exact same thing. Uh, and now you can go out and start focusing on the fun part, the design part, picking your style, picking your color, um, you know, starting to put that together with the other elements of your remodel. But you have at least a foundation for understanding understanding really what waterproof flooring means for you in its practical application. So if you found this video valuable to you today, be sure to hit that like button for me. Comment down below with what any of your thoughts were. If you have any additional questions, anything that I said that maybe I could clarify a little bit better for you, I'm happy to do so down there. And also you can let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see me make future videos on. If that's the case, be sure to subscribe so that you can follow along. And I'm here for all your remodeling needs. So until next time guys, this is Robert. Happy remodeling.